Yep. Good morning, Philadelphia. Andrew, I'm smiling this morning. Why are you smiling, Zachary? Want to know who else is smiling? I want to know. Russell Wilson. Oh. Bombshell trade this weekend out of the NFL. Jamal Adams traded to Seattle for two first-round picks. My opinion, this makes them the favorite to win the NFC. I don't see why not. You got one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL in Russell Wilson. You had a top 15 defense last year, and now you're adding the best safety in football. Plus, this is your second year with DK Metcalf. He's only going to get better from here. And Pete Carroll, he's proven time and time again to bring this team to the Super Bowl. And he, he can handle the egos of these big guys. He, Richard Sherman for, what, five years? He was able to keep him happy until he needed to get out. He's, he's just great at managing these big egos. And I, I, I don't see why he can't do it here with Jamal Adams. It's hard to, it's hard to argue against the Seahawks because they they were all they were already in the mix last year last year for the NFC but in my opinion it's um there's a little more teams in the NFC who can actually contend not just Seattle I do put Seattle within the top 3 my my other two would be San Francisco and then New Orleans I think I think that San Francisco is still going to be really strong this year just because I think just seeing them return so much they, they really seemed to gel as the season was going on. And, I mean, they, they did keep the Chiefs to a, de- to a decent lead within the Super Bowl. And then at the same time, you have New Orleans. Well, yes, yes, I know that Tampa added Tom Brady. New Orleans has proven time and time again that they are the force to beat in that division. And you already pick up so many wins in that division with the Panthers and the Falcons in there as well. Drew Brees is reliable. They've got Michael Thomas going going into the offense, and it, just the rest of New Orleans is extremely solid, and they've proven pretty hard to beat. Yeah, the one thing I might push back on that New Orleans take is Alvin Kamara's proven he he's an elite running back when healthy, but the key word there is when healthy. We got to right. see Alvin Kamara be back to his rookie year form. Mm-hmm. Plus, you got an aging Drew Brees. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Maybe that was just a fluke year from Michael Thomas. Who knows? That defense is eh. It's not nearly on the same level as Seattle or the Niners. And then with the Niners, we've seen all these teams, they lose the Super Bowl. we got the Panthers, the Falcons, the Rams. Every year after that, they drop off. The only, the only exception to this rule is the Patriots. And I love Kyle Shanahan, but he's old Bill Belichick. He's not going to get that team. I don't think he can get that team back to the Super Bowl again. I just I don't think he can do it. Even with, I love the system. I love the coach. I love the GM. I don't think Jimmy G might. I don't think he's the answer. And I, I don't see them being able to do it two years in a row. Well, I, you can, you can definitely argue Super Bowl hangover. But at the same time, you have two of the top teams in the same division, which means one of them has to go into a wild card game. And one of them would theoretically have to play an extra game, assuming one assuming one of those two teams is the first or second seed and gets the bye. So it would, assuming that San Francisco wins the division, that immediately makes it harder for Seattle because then they have to play an extra game, which and also they have to go on the road. It completely neutralizes any Seattle home field advantage unless we somehow get the sixth seed to also come in there and Seattle, and Seattle ends up as the five seed. Yeah, great points. I'm going to turn it over right now to our sports update with Joe. Joe, what you got for us? Well, guys, the COVID-19 woes for the Miami, Miami Marlins, they've continued. Four new players today alone have tested positive, and that was after yesterday, 11 players and two coaches tested for it. Uh, they possibly may have exposed the Phillies during their weekend series. So both of their games, along with both of Miami's games against the Yos, have been postponed against the Yankees. Um, now, as for Miami and the Phillies, rather, they really haven't had any new positive tests today. That doesn't mean that can change tomorrow. Now, as for all of Major League Baseball, it doesn't seem like this is a big issue yet, but it easily could be, so they have to contain it. Now, the NBA, they're going to be set to go on July 30th. they got two primetime games tipping off. They seem to be in good shape. National Hockey League on August 1st. They've also got a nice slate going for the first two days. They seem good. The NFL training camps are starting. Training camps are starting up real soon. 
They don't have a plan yet, despite many concerns voiced out by the players, so they don't have a plan yet. That's really all that's going on in the four major sports as of right now. Okay. Beautiful, Thank Joe. Thank you so I much. can't wait for sports to get back. I know you can't either. Right now, we're going to go to a caller who I think he's going to disagree with my Seattle take. All right, let's put him on then. All right, in the meantime, we're waiting on this caller. Andrew, I think we should address the Jets in this. Yeah, what do you I think was... the Jets go from here? Oh, wait, we got the caller. Oh. What's going on, man? Uh, so I agree with you guys on the Seattle topic. I think they definitely are a more improved team. But I think you guys are underestimating the Eagles. You didn't mention them as contenders in the NFC. I think, of course, they want to stay healthy. They were basically the same team they had last year that would have went far and shaved in kind and, of course, went that concussion. I think they are definitely a threat in the NFC. I think you guys are underwhelming them. I definitely agree with you on that Carson Wentz take. I'm very opinionated on Carson Wentz. I think he's one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. I think besides him, the entire team, with the addition of Darius Slay, I definitely agree with you. I think it. I think they're in the mix. I think Seattle's slightly better. I trust Russell Wilson a little bit more than I do Carson Wentz. Yeah, I but overall, overall, it's a great take. I definitely would agree with you. And if I may interject, I would, I would also say that in the past – Five years, the NFC East has always been a dog pile. I mean, we see we see constantly that the division is a race to get up to eight or nine wins, and the team who wins the East is always stuck in the four seed. And it just seems like a lot a lot of teams from that division enter the playoffs banged up. I mean, we did we did see the Eagles go on that run to the Super Bowl a, a few years back, and we did see the Cowboys clinch the number one seed. I believe it was three or four years back, but. It does seem like that could be the pattern again for the NFC East. I mean, who knows? Maybe the, maybe the Eagles come out as the odds-on favorite in that division and show it in their play, but it do, it doesn't really seem like that that's going to change just based off of recent history. Yeah, definitely. All right, thanks, guys. Great listening to you. No problem, man. Thanks for calling in. Well, that's going to do it for us today from Simonson Sports Network. I'm Zach Simonson signing off. I'm Andrew Simonson. Have a good evening.